part two, you will hear the managing director of a company called Stevenson's welcoming a group of work experience students. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Good morning everyone and welcome to Stevenson's, one of the country's major manufacturers of metal goods. Thank you for choosing us for your two weeks of work experience. My name is Julia Simmons and since the beginning of this year I've been the Managing Director. Stevenson's is quite an old company. Like me, the founder, Ronald Stevenson, went into the steel industry when he left school. That was in 1923. He set up this company when he finished his apprenticeship in 1926, although he actually started making plans two years earlier in 1924. He was a very determined young man. Stevenson's long-term plan was to manufacture components for the machine tools industry although in fact that never came about, and for the automotive industry, that is cars and lorries. However, there was a delay of five years before that happened, because shortly before the company went into production, Stevenson was given the opportunity to make goods for hospitals and other players in the healthcare industry. So that's what we did for the first five years. Over the years, we've expanded the premises considerably. We were lucky that the site is big enough, so moving to a new location has never been necessary. However, the layout is far from ideal for modern machinery and production methods, so we intend to carry out major refurbishment of this site over the next five years. I'd better give you some idea of what you'll be doing during your two weeks with us, so you know what to expect. Most mornings you'll have a presentation from one of the managers to learn about their department, starting this morning with research and development. And you'll all spend some time in each department, observing what's going on and talking to people, as long as you don't stop them from doing their work altogether. In the past, a teacher from your school has come in at the end of each week to find out how the group were getting on, but your school isn't able to arrange that this year. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. OK, now I'll briefly help you to orientate yourselves around the site. As you can see, we're in the reception area, which we try to make attractive and welcoming to visitors. There's a corridor running left from here, and if you go along that, the door facing you at the end is the entrance to the coffee room. This looks out onto the main road on one side and some trees on the other and that'll be where you meet each morning. The factory is the very big room on the far side of the site. Next to it is the warehouse which can be accessed by lorries going up the road to the turning area at the end. You can get to the warehouse by crossing to the far side of the courtyard and then the door is on your right. Somewhere you'll be keen to find is the staff canteen. This is right next to reception. 
I can confidently say that the food's very good, but the view isn't. The windows on one side look onto a corridor and courtyard, which aren't very attractive at all, and on the other, onto the access road, which isn't much better. You'll be using the meeting room quite often, and you'll find it by walking along the corridor to the left of the courtyard and continuing along it to the end. The meeting room is the last one on the right, and I'm afraid there's no natural daylight in the room. Then you'll need to know where some of the offices are. The Human Resources Department is at the front of this building. So you head to the left along the corridor from reception and it's the second room you come to. It looks out onto the main road. And finally, the boardroom, where you'll be meeting sometimes. That has quite a pleasant view as it looks out onto the trees. Go along the corridor past the courtyard right to the end. The boardroom is on the left next to the factory. OK, now, are there any questions before we move? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part two. Part 3. You will hear two students called Jess and Tom discussing their art projects. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. How are you getting on with your art project, Tom? OK. Like, they gave us the theme of birds to base our project on, and I'm not really all that interested in wildlife, but I'm starting to get into it. I've pretty well finished the introductory stage. So have I. When they gave us all those handouts with details of books and websites to look at, I was really put off. But the more I read, the more interested I got. Mm, me too. I found I could research so many different aspects of birds in art. Colour, movement, texture. So I was looking forward to the bird park visit. What a letdown. It poured with rain and we hardly saw a single bird much less used than the trip to the Natural History Museum. Yeah. I liked all the stuff about evolution there. The workshop sessions with Dr Fletcher were good too, especially the brainstorming sessions. Oh, I missed those because I was ill. I wish we could have seen the projects last year students did. Hmm, I suppose they want us to do our own thing, not copy. Have you drafted your proposal yet? Yes, but I haven't handed it in. I need to amend some parts. I've realised the notes from my research are almost all just descriptions. I haven't actually evaluated anything, so I'll have to fix that. Oh, I didn't know we had to do that. I'll have to look at that too. Did you do a timeline for the project? Yes, and a mind map. Yeah, so did I. I quite enjoyed that. But it was hard having to explain the basis for my decisions in my action plan. What? You know, give a rationale. I didn't realise we had to do that. OK, I can add it now. And I've done the video diary presentation and worked out what I want my outcome to be in the project. Someone told me it's best not to be too precise about your actual outcome at this stage, so you have more scope to explore your ideas later on. So I'm going to go back to my proposal to make it a bit more vague. Really? OK, I'll change that too then.
Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. One part of the project I'm unsure about is where we choose some paintings of birds and say what they mean to us. Like, I chose a painting of a falcon by Landseer. I like it because the bird's standing there with his head turned to one side, but he seems to be staring straight at you. But I can't just say it's a bit scary, can I? Hmm. You could talk about the possible danger suggested by the bird's look. Oh, OK. There's a picture of a fish hawk by Audubon I like. It's swooping over the water with a fish in its talons and with great black wings which take up most of the picture. So you could discuss it in relation to predators and food chains? Well, actually, I think I'll concentrate on the impression of rapid motion it gives. Right. Do you know that picture of a kingfisher by Van Gogh? It's perching on a reed growing near a stream. Yes, it's got these beautiful blue and red and black shades. Mm -hmm. I've actually chosen it because I saw a real kingfisher once when I was little. I was out walking with my grandfather and I've never forgotten it. Oh, so we can use a personal link? Sure. OK. There's a portrait called William Wells. I can't remember the artist, but it's a middle-aged man who's just shot a bird. And his expression and the way he's holding the bird in his hand suggests he's not sure about what he's done. To me, it's about how ambiguous people are in the way they exploit the natural world. Interesting. There's Gauguin's picture, Vira Matty. He did it in Tahiti. It's a woman with a white bird behind her that is eating a lizard. And what I'm interested in is what idea this bird refers to. Apparently, it's a reference to the never-ending cycle of existence. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I chose a portrait of a little boy, Giovanni de' Medici. He's holding a tiny bird in one fist. I like the way he's holding it carefully so he doesn't hurt it. Ah, oh, right. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part three.